Coming up, a big helping hand from American Airlines. Your RV-10 sweepstakes airplane is in for paint. And picking up the right landmarks. AOPA Live This Week begins in just a moment. AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Alyssa Cobb. There is no better time than now to start to learn to be a pilot or an aviation mechanic or any other great aerospace job. Some are paying up to $60,000 a year within the first year after graduating high school. It's pretty amazing and as we've told you before, Boeing says there'll be some 212,000 new professional pilots needed in North America mm -hmm. in the next 20 years, not to mention some 200,000 aviation technicians. Guess what? Airlines are very concerned about that. But one, American Airlines, thinks that AOPA is part of the solution and they're betting money on it. AOPA Live's Warren Morningstar has more. As I started traveling to some of the schools that were using the AOPA curriculum, it was obvious that what they were doing uh, had great impact on the students' lives. Greenville Technical Charter High School is making a big difference in students' lives. The South Carolina school was an early adopter of the AOPA You Can Fly Aviation STEM curriculum. And this week, American Airlines gave the school more than $8,000 for its aviation program. We are happy to, to be awarding you and your school uh, this check that you applied for. Um, we hope that it's, it's uh, one small way, along with many other uh, grants that you've been receiving, to, to help kind of boost this aviation program even more. The first of some 16 grants from American this year all going to schools using the free AOPA curriculum. What we're going to do is we're going to con try to constrict this area of the tubings. And so as you know what happens in a Venturi, we're going to get airflow through the tube. There will be a pressure change as it goes through the constriction. Doug Adamatis, the kids call him Mr. A, is the school science teacher and the driving force behind implementing the AOPA program. If I can get him into my classroom, I can make him a pilot. And he does that with drones. In researching for the grant, I came across an article and it was uh, for professional flight schools. And there was, a, there was a sentence in there that caught my attention that the discovery flight is probably the single most powerful uh, thing to attract students into a flight school. But how many kids can afford or even want to seek out a discovery flight? With a drone, we can take the aircraft to people, to our middle schools, to get them excited about uh, flying uh, in a safe situation where their feet are still on the ground, but looking through the, the, the first person view goggles, the FPV goggles, they are seeing what it would be like if they were in that aircraft. I flew. You flew? I flew. The American Airlines money will get Mr. A and other two drone setups to use in recruiting for the charter school and for his aviation-based science class. Whoa! Now Greenville is home to some big technology firms like BMW and Lockheed, and the charter school is on the campus of Greenville Technical College. So they have a two-year A&P program, and the the cool thing about partnering with them is that they can start that two-year program while they're still in high school. So they can, they can knock out that first year as high schoolers, then go finish it one year out of high school, go to work for Lockheed, build fighter jets, and make $60,000 a year. Good money. But for Mr. A, it isn't just about the money. I love people. I love kids. I get the challenges that they're going through, and I want to help them through it like I did. In Greenville, South Carolina, Warren Morningstar, AOPA Live. This is the third year for the American Airlines Flight Education Grants. From now on, the grants are going only to schools using the AOPA You Can Fly Science, Technology, Engineering, Math, or STEM curriculum. 
Wow, what a time to be a youth going into aerospace careers. It really is. Uh, just a few years ago, the starting salaries on these were not very good for right. a lot of mechanics and particularly for commuter airline pilots. Mm -hmm. Now they come with signing bonuses and it's amazing uh, w what the opportunities are for aviation and aerospace right now. Yeah, and being a little biased in the aviation industry ourselves, but I mean, Maybe. what better career <laughs> can you go into than aviation? Right, great people all in all and wonderful opportunities, particularly right now. Yeah, it's wonderful. That's right. Well, speaking of getting young people into aviation, one of the great forces behind not only funding the AOPA Foundation, but many aviation's programs is the James C. Ray Foundation. True to form, they are sponsoring a matching grant for a program called STEM Flights. It's a program that pairs young people with mentor pilots for an introduction to aviation. They also provide STEM programming for youth. The Ray Foundation is helping them grow. Find more information on the STEM Flights website. Meanwhile, the feds are worried about Chinese drone security. Chinese-based DJI, the largest drone manufacturer in the world, the security concerns caused the Department of Interior to ground hundreds of drones. DJI maintains its products are secure, though. The department uses drones for important missions like forest firefighting, and because of the grounding, several interagency drone training courses were canceled. AOPA has received many calls from members in recent months concerned about the hull and liability insurance premium increases they are seeing at renewal. AOPA leaders have met with numerous underwriters and insurance executives to understand what is happening in the insurance market. We wanted answers as to what caused 10 to 100 percent increases or more in premiums. Now Tom, you've been working on this story and talking to insurance executives. Right. What's the deal? Well, the change is a result of the hardening of the insurance market after more than a decade of flat or, in some cases, decreasing premiums, and we've all enjoyed that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the insurance industry has sustained significant losses in aviation and other markets in recent years, losses that have outpaced premiums, and that has caused some insurers to exit certain markets, including aviation. In order to be profitable, of course, those that remain have to increase premiums, in some cases rather dramatically, particularly in the owner-flown turbine market and for older pilots. My story on the AOP website has some tips on ways you can mitigate the increases. Yeah. So this has been brewing for a while, and because of the hurricanes, earthquakes, and uh, forest fires, and tsunamis around the world, and a couple of airline accidents and that sort of thing, and some satellite-based uh, accidents or uh, failures for launches, the insurance company is just taking a beating mm. in the last uh, number of years. They've been losing money in the aviation and aerospace segment in particular. Mm. Some of them have exited, as I said, so therefore the rates, rates are going up. Good news is this is a temporary situation. The folks okay. I've talked to suggest that uh, within the next two to three years, we'll probably see it kind of level off next year, still at higher premiums, but kind of flat. Mm -hmm. And then by 2023 20, or so, uh, we may start to see it decline once again back into a softening market instead of this hardening one. Important thing is, though, for you to present yourself well to your broker. Yes. Do more than the minimum training that the FAA requires so that you show that you're a proactive pilot when it comes to safety. And if you're an older pilot, you may need to consider going down to a simpler airplane. If you're flying a complex airplane, um, there's been a lot of issues around gear up landings with older mm -hmm. pilots, the insurance companies say at least, and so they're looking uh, fondly on pilots willing to step down to a simpler airplane. Okay. Or I guess if they want to keep their aircraft, they could always bring on another pilot to right. fly good, with them. Good point. Uh, bring another pilot along with you, and that sometimes can help and make the insurance company more set, uh, comfortable. What's well, good to know this is temporary. We just need to buckle up and ride it out and for a year or two. Out. Yeah, good point. Well, there was a first for a new tilt rotor. The CMV 22B is a Navy flying machine built by Bell and Boeing took to the sky for the first time this week. It's the latest variant in the tilt rotor fleet. The Navy will use the machine to replace the C-2A Greyhound for taking people and supplies from shore to aircraft carriers. And now I did uh, a couple of years ago, we, Warren and I went out to an aircraft carrier. We were on mm. a C-2 Greyhound. And I gotta tell you, those things probably are ready for <laughs> retirement. This thing was leaking fuel and hydraulic fluid and all kinds of oh. things inside the cabin. <laughs> so they're pretty old. Uh, good to see them being replaced finally. <laughs> and we're bound to see some innovative things in the Whirlybird segment of general aviation because next week is the Helicopter Association International Convention. We have a crew slated to be there and it'll bring you the latest from the show in Anaheim, California.
And we have the latest on the AOPA RV-10 sweepstakes airplane. Next time you see it, you probably won't recognize it. Lancaster Aero in Pennsylvania is giving the airplane a new paint job and it will be finished soon. Keep an eye out for more about the sweepstakes paint and the big scheme unveiling. Coming up, Patty Wagstaff talks about her landing accident. And choosing the right landmarks for visual checkpoints. We'll be right back. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. Death, taxes, and notice to airmen being hard to find. At least one of those is about to change. January 24, the sun will set on the FAA's old pilot web NOTAM system. Users of the FAA's website will be directed to the more efficient and user-friendly NOTAM search web page. That is, those pilots who have not yet already found the site since it's already active. The end of pilot web will occur slightly sooner than the FAA announced last fall. A few months after pilot web is gone, the sunsetting of older sources of information will continue. The FAA also announced that as part of the notices to airmen modernization effort in which AOPA, by the way, has played a key advisory role, the final edition of the Notices to Airmen publication, or the NTAP, will be published on May 21. Publication will be discontinued effective June 18. You check the NOTAMs before you fly, and you also plan out your flight. As a CFI, I always tell students that it's important to have visual checkpoints as part of a VFR flight plan, but picking the right ones is critical. AOPA Technical Editor Jill Tarman explains. Even though GPS navigation is so prevalent, we still need to learn navigation by pilotage and dead reckoning. A big part of that are landmarks to use as visual checkpoints. Paul, well, think back three months ago when you were planning your long cross country. What kind of landmarks did you pick? I was going from Frederick to Johnstown to Cumberland to Frederick, so I knew I'd have a couple ridges I'd be passing, and I knew I'd have the Hagerstown Airport at Beamy, so I chose that, and then I started counting ridges, and I knew at that point, hopefully, the wind farms near Johnstown would come into view, and they did. So it sounds like it all worked out well for you. Yeah, having the visual landmarks to use to be able to keep track of where I was going, in addition to the magenta line and the four flight and the flight following and everything else I had, the visual checkpoints are a really good tool to have. They are. The landmarks we think will be easy to spot from 3,000 feet aren't always that great. Paul and I are gonna show you some good landmarks and some not so good landmarks. Be careful when picking a body of water as a landmark. It should be distinctive. Lake Marburg in southern Pennsylvania has a unique shape and two bridges that cross it, which can help distinguish it from other lakes in the area. The Susquehanna River is hard to miss and clearly what you're looking for. Frederick's Lake Linganore, on the other hand, is hard to find and not that distinct. Here on the East Coast, train tracks can be hard to spot. Sometimes they're overgrown or hard to pick out amongst the clutter of roads and buildings. We lucked out on this flight in that there were boxcars parked along a siding, making it stand out. Now out west you'll have better luck because there's not as much rolling terrain and trees around a lot of the train tracks and in fact it goes back to one of the early idioms of flight, IFR, I follow railroads. Airports make great landmarks, just so long as you're not trying to spot a tiny private airstrip. Here's Maryland's Carroll County Airport, pretty easy to see. Now, tell me where in this orchard is Boggers Airport? It's on the sectional. It has to be there, somewhere. How about some visuals that are surprisingly easy to spot? Like the cement plant? That is a Frederick favorite. It's about 14 nautical miles north of the airport and clearly visible from pattern altitude. Power plants are usually good markers too. They're often situated on rivers. Just remember not to fly too low over a power plant. So be open to things you might not have considered. And don't be surprised if something you thought would be a good landmark doesn't work out. Well, wow, you know, picking a good landmark is really the key. It is, and it's amazing how things that seem obvious on the chart aren't always so mm -hmm. obvious when you're out there flying, or, flying around. So, yeah. Uh, good, good advice there. It is, and you know, when you get the, the ones that are great, there's no question where you are. Yeah. You know, once you see that, you know, you know exactly where you are in your chart, and you can't beat that. And it brings a lot of confidence when you see the first one and get it right. <laughs> it's like, whew, okay, we're on our way. Yes. <laughs> 
Well, no matter how well you plan your flight, unexpected can happen. The Air Safety Institute's There I Was podcast is all about unpredictable scenarios and how pilots survive them. Latest episode, aerobatic star Patty Wagstaff talks about lessons learned after a runway excursion and accident in her V-tail bonanza. All of a sudden, the plane sort of veers right into the grass and it hit a berm and the plane started to go over and it did. It just went straight over, tail over nose and ended up upside down on the grass. You can find the There I Was podcast on your favorite podcast app or the AOPA website. That's it for our show this week. Like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And let us know what you think. Our email is on your screen. We'll see you next week. Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft.